Hi. I was taking some cans and bottles to our local recycling place and this was lying there. I thought, oh, let's take it back and see if we can repair it. Now, I'll just turn it over because somebody has cut the power lead off from it, which is just here. So the first thing I need to do is replace the power lead and then we'll see what other problems it has because I don't think they would just cut the power lead off for no reason but you never know right so I'm going to take the screws out first we'll take the back off and then we'll see if we can see anything replace the power lead and then we'll test it so I'll start taking the back off so I'm going to remove the stand first I think Right, now it looks like we need to remove these screws on the edge. Right, I think that one's broke. I don't think we want to get that one out because I think the plastic it attaches to is broken away. It looks like we need to take these two little screws out here as well. Right, let's see if this lets us into it now then. flat screwdriver, I'll just try I can't see any other screws in it they must just be clipped I think there we go right, I'm just going to spin this around see if I can get a better view of this side of it right, I'm going to have a problem with this one I might have to get some pliers and just try and hold a bit of plastic to see if I can unscrew it because it looks like it's taking the screen. Right, the broken bit of plastic. Right, and we're into it. Well, I had a feeling what the fault was going to be before I even took it apart. Because a quite common problem with TV sets, or it used to be. Have you spotted it yet? I'll just zoom down. Have you spotted it yet then? Domed capacitors on the power supply. So what's probably been happening with this is it, the power light's probably been pulsing on and off and it hasn't been switching on. Because I've had a few TV sets like that in the past and it's usually faulty capacitors on the power supply. Let's see if we can get this power supply out. So it looks quite an old set, this. It's got cold cathode backlight, not LED. So let's unplug those. I'll just zoom out the fraction. I'll unplug the mains lead. And then we'll undo those four screws. Right, there's the power supply board out. I'll get this bit out of the way and then we'll have a look at this. Right, let's get these two capacitors removed then. So one of them seems to be here. Let's add a bit fresh solder first. Actually, no, one of them is here. They're wrong legs there, there we go, that's one out and the other one seems to be here right, that's the two capacitors out, I'll just clean those two holes up there right, let's get the component tester and we'll just see what these measure, just have a curiosity Looks like the wire's just broke on my component testing. I'll just redo that. Right, I'll just zoom down a bit. Well, I think that one's a diode. <laughs> so I'd say that one's well cooked. Let's see what this one measures, if anything. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that one's a diode as well. 
Right, I'll see if I can find some replacement capacitors. Let's put those to one side. Right, so I found a couple of used ones. Let's just see if they're okay. I haven't got any new ones of the correct value. Right, well that one seems okay. Let's just try this one. Yep, that one seems okay as well. Let's clean these legs off a little bit. Sure, we'll get these in the right way. I'll just give that a little bit of a clean up on the back there with a bit of IPA. I'll just use one of these little cotton buds. Now, I don't know whether it's worth pulling any of these other ones just to check the values of them, so I might do that as well. So, there's one here, they don't look damaged, but let's just see what kind of condition they're in. Well, it's a little bit down that one. Because it's supposed to be a thousand microfarads and it's only measuring 837. There's another one there. Let's take that one out. Eight hundred and sixty. I'll see if I've got some replacement capacitors for these two as well. Well, interestingly enough, here's another used capacitor here, which is the same rating, and this one shows just over a thousand microfarads. But he has a brand new capacitor. I'll we'll put this one on, and this one's only showing 933, and this one's brand new, it's never been used. So that's a little strange, isn't it? Right, so I'm going to put these two back in the circuit board there. Now right, let's clean those holes up on the PCB again. Just make it easier to get the capacitors in. So the other ones might well be okay. Where was the other one I took out now? Up here, wasn't it? One of the other common problems used to have on TV power supplies was the bootstrap capacitor. There's normally a little capacitor on the high voltage side, which sometimes causes problems as well. Probably that type there. I mean, I've not looked at the exact circuit of this and the IC it's using, but it might be worth checking that one as well. Right, let's see if we can get these capacitors in there. We go. I don't think that hole's quite clear on that one. Yeah, I'll put that one in here because there's less room. You can see that capacitor slightly larger physically. Nice, I'll just snip the legs off this that are sticking through. And I think I might give this a try actually. I'll tell you, I was going to pull out of that capacitor, wasn't I? The, uh, the little bootstrap one or start up cap. Right, so that one here, which is. See what, see what value it is. It looks like 50 volts, 33 microfarads. Oh, that doesn't actually look too bad, that one. I think that one's actually okay. Let's clean these holes back up. And we'll solder that one back in. the right way around. I'll give that a little bit of a clean up as well. 
And I'm just going to solder that resistor there because I think I might have just wicked some solder off on it. There we go. Right, let's zoom out the fraction. And for the mains lead, what I've done, if I can just find it here. I chopped up a figure of eight lead. Because I've already got the plug moulded onto it. Like so. I took the cable strain relief off the old cable. Put it onto this new one. But what I'm going to have to do is put a cable tie or something so it can't pull through. And then I just used some heat shrink and soldered the original connector that goes onto the PCB back onto the cable. Right, let's get the rest of the TV then and we'll try it. Right, let's move these screws slightly. And what I might do is try my little dim bulb tester, just in case it decides to explode all over the bench. Right, let's plug this in. Well, I can hear something. Right, let's just try that direct into the mains then. I don't know where the power is for this. Actually, put a red standby light on. And it's just lit up blue. I don't seem to have any picture though. Oh, yes, we do. Something just flashed on there. Something flashed on briefly and then it went off. So currently we don't have any picture on it, I don't know whether you can see or not, I don't think you can. It's just a bit awkward to try and get it in view. I don't seem to have any backlight. So there may be more problems on this, I don't know. Right, I'm just going to switch it back off a moment. So I'm just wondering if it's a problem with the backlight circuit. I'll just connect this a second as well. I mean it could be the actual tubes themselves. Alright, so let's check that there's no voltage in that mains capacitor. Yeah, it's only about 4 volts in it, so that's fine. And the other ones are only 25 volts or so. Right, well at least it didn't blow up, so that's one thing. I'll just get this out of the way again. And we'll see if we can have a look at this backlight circuit. Let's just zoom down a bit. So this is the transformer. It looks like it looks like there's two MOSFETs here that do the switching to the transformer. No, I don't know if that's let's just try and zoom in a bit more. Now I can't tell if that's just a bit flux or something. flux so these are the MOSFETs that control the output and they're the capacitors that have just changed by the look of it so I wonder if it's got anything to do with the type of capacitors I've used There's another fault on here. And 
I was trying to work through where the supply for this is. I mean, that looks like one of them there. Because it goes through into this MOSFET here. I don't know if it's just one supply, whether there's a split supply. So I don't know if it's that capacitor there and that one. I mean, there was another couple of capacitors on here that we didn't look at. Those two. Maybe worth pulling those as well. Because one of them does seem to feed actually I'm not sure it's a transformer it goes through the diode into this capacitor which then smooths it it does go through the coil and then to this one yeah let's have a look at those ones Possibly. And the other one was just here. Yeah, I could just plug the capacitor straight in. Let's just try that. It might be easier. Well, questionable. Let's just try this one. Again, it's supposed to be a thousand microfarads. And it's shown 820, so it is a little bit down. Right, I'll see if I've got some more capacitors then. One hour later. Right, you're probably wondering what on earth's going on here. Right, I'll try and explain. So, the TV was powering up. The picture was coming on for about a second and then going off. And it appeared to be a problem with the backlight. So to rule out the power supply, what I thought I'd do, I actually found a schematic for this power supply board, including the backlight driver, on the internet. So the backlight powered from 12 volts here, so I thought I'd use the bench power supply, and then I wasn't dealing with any main stuff, so it was quite safe to work on, apart from the high voltage output here. And what I've done, I've soldered a wire here, which enables the backlight. So I'll just zoom down a bit so you can see, in case anybody else wants to play along at home, let's see. So I've just soldered a jumper wire from this position here to that transistor, and that transistor normally switches the backlight on via this transistor, which then switches this one, which then switches power to the TL494 chip here. So what I'm doing is I'm just sending power in direct and just basically bypassing out that transistor, so the backlight's enabled all the time. So, I'll show you what's happening currently, but I might have to turn the light off and lift this TV up a bit so you can actually see what's going on. So, I'll just turn the light off a moment. And I'll just lift this board up a bit. And hopefully you should be able to see on the blue mat, once I turn the power supply on in 3, 2, 1, and there you can see it light up for a second and then go off. And if I just switch the power supply off again and switch it back on, you can see the backlight briefly lights up and then goes off. So that's pretty much what it was doing when I had the set powered up. I was doing pretty much exactly the same. Watch your eyes. Now it might take a second for the camera to sort itself out here. There we go. So there's a problem on the backlight circuit so what I've done is I've rigged the scope up here and I'll just show you what's happening on the scope I'll just get the probe out here right so this is the this is the input to the transformer that drives the backlight so if I just put the probe on here and I've got the bench power supply set to 12 volts at 3 amp. And you can see there it's oscillating for a bit and then it switches off. 
I'll just switch the power supply on again and you'll see it do it again and then it switches off so when I was looking at the circuit diagram what it does it gets some over current protection or over voltage protection from which line is it now this is one of them it gets some feedback which goes down here and it ends up on these couple of transistors just here and here so it's hard to try and get it on the screen there we go so it ends up at these two transistors here one senses it from this backlight and one senses it from this backlight and it controls these two transistors here which then send a signal into here which tells the chip to turn off so if I bridge those two pins there and keep that pin higher than that one it'll just run but obviously that's not right so I've actually found out I think what the problem is and I'll just show you I'll zoom out a moment right so I'll just switch the bench power supply off as well a bit quieter so I thought it was either the problem with the lights possibly or one of the forums that I had a quick look on suggested the capacitors here there's a couple of high voltage capacitors I might as well just unplug these because they don't need to be plugged in now so you can have a look at the capacitors here we've got a couple of high voltage capacitors there now this is the transformer that produces the high voltage and if we measure between these two pins here we should get a very low resistance reading just trying to get my probes on a bit better there yeah about 0.3 ohms which is about right because I have found a forum that describes this transformer as well and this is one output and it should be about 800 ohms and it is well, let's check this output so that's not right that shouldn't be about 3k if we check this one again it should be about 800 ohms and if we check this one about 3k so I think the transformer's failed. Right, let's get my solder sucker. We'll take the transformer out and we'll have a look. Now I have spent a little bit of time diagnosing this, but I didn't want to really bore everybody with an hours long video or a few hours long video. So, And I did have a bit of a break from it. Because sometimes I find it's better to leave things and come back to them. So it you clear your head a bit as well. I did actually resolder these just in case it was dry joints, but obviously I don't think it is. I think that's them all. Right, so there's the transformer. So the outputs are these ones here. Tell me what put it on the circuit board, maybe we see it a bit better. I'll go between just get the meat down shot. I'll go between this one and this one. We've got about 3k. And if I go between this one and this one, we have about 800 ohms. So this needs a new transformer. It has got a part number on it, which is a TMS93700 CT. So I'm going to have a look, see if I can find a transformer. And if not, we may have to end up buying the whole power supply. But like I said, it definitely looks like the transformer is the problem here. So, right, I'll see if I can find some parts and then we'll continue when some parts arrive. Well, it's been about a week and the new part has arrived. However, there's a bit of an issue. So the original transformer, if I measure this winding, 
about 800 ohms or so and measure this winding open circuit so I ordered this transformer from Aliexpress we'll check this winding about just under well, 950 ohms and we'll check this winding open circuit so I was thinking to myself, oh, I made a mistake here or something. So I looked at the circuit diagram again for the inverter. And it's definitely got two coils shown. And there's definitely two coils shown here. So I thought, well, they wouldn't put another coil there if that was supposed to be open circuit. So when I zoom down and have a look at this transformer. You can see that's been soldered in, some, in something before. This looks like a used transformer that they've pulled out of something. That definitely doesn't look new. So I've had to order another transformer. I'll just zoom back down a bit. So I've ordered another one from another supplier. And if we measure this one, if I've got the same two pins here, we've got about 1k. And if I go on these two pins here, we've got about 1k. So this transformer is actually working, and this one isn't. So I emailed the seller to say, and he said, oh, you're not checking it right, or you're not, you're not testing it correctly. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm going to open, have to open a complaint with this one, and get this one returned, or get a refund or whatever. But I've not really had much problems with AliExpress. This is only maybe the fourth time I've had a problem out of lots of components and things that I've ordered so right we'll get these ones out of the way and I'll get this one out of the way for now and I'll bring the TV over we'll fit this and then we'll see if, if everything works right so I'm going to remove my little test wires here let's get those out of the way we'll fit the new transformer but I'm also going to change the two capacitors here just in case any of them breaking down and putting a short on the transformer I don't think they are but I'd rather just be safe than sorry let's see if I can get this in situ first something a bit like that let's get a couple of pins soldered first okay and get these rests soldered up right I'm just going to use the solder sugar and remove these capacitors Right, we'll snip these legs off. Right, I'll get the rest of it and we'll see if it works. Right, back with the power lead. I'll just grab an extension. Right, let's see if this works now then. I can't remember where the on off switch is. There we go. It looks like it's all working. Excellent. Right, I'll get the back and that put back on. And then I think I've got a plan where this may live. Right, I'll just get the back on first. So I've got the perfect job for this and we're going to go there and take it now and I'm probably going to save somebody about £100. So let's go. So the new home for the monitor is our local dog rescue centre. I'm busy installing some CCTV cameras for them and they didn't have a monitor for the DVR so I thought this would be ideal for them to be able to use for the DVR system. So not only rescued from the landfill and saving the environment but also helping our local charity as well so right then if you enjoyed this video please give it the thumbs up if you want to see more like it please subscribe any comments or questions please leave it in the comment section below and as always have a great day thanks for watching